Okay, this is the new Badger orientation. I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> there it is. There we go. Okay. Hi. Hope you all are doing well. We're going to record this in case folks wanted to attend and were not able to. Um, so, yeah, let's get to it. I'm actually going to show this. I was going to hide it, but then I like having it there. It makes me feel better. So just before we start, everybody knows this um, presentation right here, all the links, everything, all the everything I say is going to be right here available for you in the badging Slack channel. So if you're not in there, go in there. You'll see this at the top. It has all these links, including these slides. So don't worry about massively taking notes during this presentation because it's all right there for you. Okay, so our event badging program um, is really just trying to help open source events be better, full stop. We're just helping them um, think, think through some things on ways they can better center diversity, equity, inclusion. We are helping them have more ideas on things we've maybe seen in other places if they're struggling to find something to, to do in one of these areas. Um, but also, um, we the whole point of getting a badge is for them to show to potential speakers or attendees or even sponsors that they do care about diversity, equity, inclusion, and that they've taken the time to go through this process and fill out the application and um, and and take it from beginning to end because it's it's a I mean it is a process right like it does take some time. And um, so yeah, so that's really what we're trying to do here is just help events be better, help them show people that they care, they're trying, and then um, give them, if, if we can, give them some ideas on how to, how to do stuff that, that maybe they don't have any ideas about. I should also just say that, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna touch on this later, but I will say it now, we are not meant to be judges here, we are just meant to be their partners. So we are not the authorities. We do not know everything. Don't feel like you as a badger have to know everything because that is not the case at all. Mostly you're going to be checking to see what that what they said they're doing is in fact what they're doing. The, to the best of our ability. So just want to put that out there that this is much more of a partnership than um, a, like a judge kind of thing. So becoming a badger is a really great way to just start contributing right out of the gate. You do not need to have any knowledge of any metrics or anything, even really about chaos. Um, it's a great way to also make an impact, right? You're helping open source events be better for everybody. And um, it shouldn't take but about 15, maybe 30 if you get two, but two applications to review a month. Hopefully we have enough badgers to go around. Sometimes we do get a a wave of new applications coming in at one time, but um, for the most part, you'll probably get maybe one application a month. And of course, if you're not familiar with GitHub, this is a great way to just kind of play around because we use GitHub for everything here. Uh, so it's it's a no uh, like a no risk way to kind of learn your way around GitHub. Like you can't break anything. We'll just say that <laughs> you can't break anything here. Um, so it's it's most it's all done through issues, so you don't have to worry about making a pull request or anything like that. It's, it's in the issues part of GitHub, which I think is maybe the simplest part, if I were to guess. Um, so if you are a beginner to GitHub, this is a great way to just get started with that as well. Here's some just high level uh, high level overview of what in what is entailed in the event badging program. Here is the website and we're going to go look at this. Um, oh, yay, it is working. Okay, good. Uh, we're going to go take a deeper look at this as we go through an actual uh, application together. But that's where all the magic happens right there at badging.chaos.community. And that is where the organizers are going to apply for the event and tell us how they center DEI in their event. Um, we do base these off of chaos DEI metrics which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, so that's the tie-in to chaos. It's not just we're asking them random questions, we are asking them questions about metrics we've talked about in our diversity, equity, and inclusion working group. We do have two separate human reviewers, which you would be, that's what we call badgers. Uh, so that would be you, if you would like to do that. Um, that's where you come in. And then, um, we, as I mentioned, we do everything on GitHub. So everything's transparent, everything's open. Hey, Harmony, how you doing? 
we uh, we are All recording right. this. So if you if you want to go back, you can see like what we talked about on these slides. But um, yeah, we are recording this, so no worries. And then we do have uh, a central list <clears throat> that we keep on the badging. Oop, that one's still in progress. Okay, let me just make sure. We've been doing some stuff to the badging uh, website, so it's been off and on. Let's see if this will work. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I don't know what. Maybe my link is bad then. Um, so here are some of the folks who have gotten badges in the past. So we'll take a look at some of these too. But yeah, some really great events have gone through this process. So we're super happy about that. We're also getting, oops, let me just close that. We're also getting very close to number 200. So we'll have to look and go back and see. I don't know how to, how to count. Oh, wait, it said 192 in the front, didn't it? Yeah, so we're getting really close to 200. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop right here really quick, uh, just before I go on to see if there's any questions. And also take a drink of coffee because I need coffee this morning. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> uh, Harmony, you missed my gigantic coffee cup, but you'll see it later if you come to a meeting later. It's almost the size of my head. It's glorious because I need that much coffee today. <laughs> okay. I, hope I, don't. <laughs> oh, I love y'all y'all are y'all are great um okay anyway uh so here are the badge levels we'll talk about these for a second this is essentially uh there's a review checklist which we'll we'll talk about that you'll see it in action um which is this is what it looks like this is what you're going to be working off of in in the issue that you're assigned uh, and, and basically the badging bot is going to go through and count how many checks they get and it will add that with the other reviewer and then it will issue the badge. That's pretty much it. Very simple. So if they get more than 80% of those checks, they're going to get a gold badge. And if they're 60 to 80, they'll get a silver and so on and so forth. So we don't really, we don't really care necessarily what badge they get so if someone comes in and they're fine with a passing badge then okay we'll 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 issue that uh, most folks keep going until they get a silver or or gold so uh, we'll talk about what that means but basically as i mentioned before it's a partnership so we want them to get as high as possible like we want them to to do well because that means that the event is going to be more awesome for everybody else. The, the better they're doing, the better the event is. So if there's a way for us to help them get from, say, passing to silver, then we want to try to do that if we can. And sometimes we can't because they just don't have the resources to do any of the things that we might recommend. Um, but um, we, we want them to do well. Just throwing that out there. Uh, okay, so team members, you all probably know all of these wonderful, lovely folks. Uh, myself, Ruth, Adyinka, really do the team lead and maintainers. Adyinka does a lot of the work, to be perfectly honest. It's mostly Adyinka. Um, and then Enoch has been the lead for the badging bot. Desmond has also been doing a lot of work. And Gift, as well, has been doing a lot of work under Kingsley um, in the front end under Adyinka as well. So uh, we just did redesign this badging website, and you'll see how like beautiful it looks. That's why um, the, all those folks worked really, worked really hard on that project. So um, it is different than the regular Chaos Community website. It's a whole separate entity. So that's another place where people can contribute. If any of you folks on here want to do that, that is also a separate thing. So like our main one is based on WordPress. The this one is not. This one is its own its own monster here. So. There's um, some issues and whatnot uh, in that repository. There's a, actually a whole other uh, GitHub organization that is this all falls under. So it's actually not even under the chaos organization on GitHub. It's under badging, which you'll see. I'll show you in a, in a sec. Um, OK, this is the workflow of how it goes when someone fills out an application. So that's kind of the first step is that they're going to do that. They're going to go to that website, fill out the application. Again, it's based on chaos DEI metrics, um, so not just random questions that we're asking. Um, then the bot, the badging bot, opens an issue in the badging org on GitHub. Then Eddie Inc. is going to assign two badgers, which would be you all. 
you're going to go through and verify the information and give them a check if they are doing it. Um, and then if you have questions, you can just ask the or event organizer right there in GitHub. Just it's all in an issue. You can just at mention them and ask any questions you want. If something's not clear, for instance, on their website, or you can't find a piece of information that they said that they had on there, um, that would be the kind of questions you would ask them. And then when you're finished with review, you will just tag Adyinka and just say, hey, I'm finished. She'll, she's going to run this command called result, which gives that preliminary score up here. It'll say, hey, you know, that they're, they're coming in at, say, 79%. So um, they would be getting a silver. So Adyinka may go back to them and say, hey, you're you're close to getting a gold. Is there anything you want to change or, um, you know, do differently so that we can bump you up into that gold level? Um, and if they say, yeah, then fine, then we'll just wait. We'll wait to do the badge until they're ready. Um, if they say, no, that's OK, there's we've really doing all the things that we can, then OK, cool. She'll just run that end command then. And that's the thing that's going to issue the actual badge. Um, and it gives them some HTML and markdown code. So if they want to put it wherever they want, they can. And then that also is going to close the issue and then add them to that list of badged projects, which we saw over here, this thing right here. And it's going to close that issue and everything's going to be all Tied, tied up with a little bow, thanks to that badging bot. Whoops, wow, I just jumped ahead. No, I didn't, okay, that's it. We're gonna do one together. Um, but before we do that, I wanna see if anybody has any questions thus far. Okay. No well, questions, go... Harmony. Oh, sorry, Harmony, what was that? I said no questions, no questions from me. Oh. Okay, cool. Then let's go do one together. So say I'm Elizabeth, I'm the event organizer for an event. I will go up here to apply for my badge and this is what I will see. So I'm gonna enter the name of testing just so they know I'm testing here. Actually, let me just write that testing. We're gonna call our conference Elizabeth Khan. And we are at elizabethcon.com. Yes, I'm an organizer. So this is going to be the first DEI metric that we use to ask them questions about. And this is based on this metric right here. So I'm going to say, yes, we commit to improving de demographic diversity at the event. So we're going to say, um, OK, we ask questions at the um, in the application or sorry, registration, registration, blah, 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 blah. Um, here's an example on the event registration page. Um, blah, blah, blah. Here's an example of the text input box. So we we'll just say blah, 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 whatever that is, whatever that looks like. Um, and then here's the criteria that the event user event badgers are going to use to to check those checks. Um, the next one is inclusive experience. Um, we also I should have mentioned too we have a different form for virtual events which has not been moved over yet I don't think. No, it has. Okay, sorry, it has. Uh, so they'll have a, they'll have mostly the same questions, but sometimes there'll be a little bit of a difference, right? Like. Um, um, the things that would be inclusive at an in-person event might not apply to a virtual event, like accessibility, unless it's like um, closed captioning or something like that. Like if we ask them about wheelchair access in the event, like that would not transfer over to a virtual event, for example. So the questions are similar, not the same. Um, but anyway, going back to this metric here, which is what this is based on, um, we're going to say blah.com slash feedback. And then here's this, here's this. You can go back and actually read through these if you like. How can attendees learn more about accessibility at the blah.com page? Yes, blah, blah, blah. Will it be accessible to folks after the event? Maybe if they are nice. 
Code of conduct, of course, is something that we ask about. Yes, here it is. So uh, we'll say blah.com slash COC. Diversity access tickets, again, is based on this metric here. If you've not heard that phrase before, this is really meant to lower the barrier of entry for folks. So it can, it can be, uh, the criteria for this can be a variety of things. So for instance, I think uh, there was a Linux, a Linux Fest, I'm sorry, a, a Linux Foundation event that came through that was um, offering different le levels of diversity access. So there was one for students, for instance, to try to make it easier for them to come. There was one for folks who um, could not afford it. So it was like a socioeconomic diversity there. There were folks, uh, there were some for folks who just were part of an underrepresented group in tech. So there's that. Um, there are, so there are different ways that people can provide this access. And again, it's really just meant to help lower that barrier of entry for folks and, and have that, uh, have that opportunity to, to attend um, that maybe they wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So that's really kind of what we're asking about is if they're able to provide free tickets or discounted tickets to folks, um, how, how are they doing that? And how do they let people know about that? Oops. Hi, Daniel, how's it going? We have been recording this so far, so no worries um, about anything you may have missed. You can go back and watch that recording. Um, the next metric we're going to ask about is family friendliness, because that's another huge barrier for folks to attend conferences, is if they are the primary child caregivers or um, caregivers for someone in their family. And so uh, a way that an event can help them attend and help that uh, not be an issue is to provide childcare or some other family friendly way uh, for them to attend. So maybe it's like you buy a ticket, you get your your child or any anybody under 18, you get that ticket for free as like a partner ticket. Uh, maybe they have a nursing area for for new um, parents to come and feed their babies and bring, so that they can bring their baby to the event. So really, that's what the goal of this one is, is to try to help those folks who would otherwise not be able to come to an event because of those childcare um, responsibilities, help them still attend. So that is a huge barrier for folks. So we're asking them about this here. So we're going to say, no, we can't afford that, but people can bring their children for free, whatever. Um, other family friendly ways, maybe uh, we have a social event at a an arcade game place so the kids can have something to do. Blah.com. Um, we're almost finished. I think we have two, mo two more events or two more um, metrics. Uh, so we, of course, we're going to ask them about accessibility. So we want, and again, this is something that's only going to apply to a, an in-person event. Obviously, virtual would not be applicable here, but we'll just say yes. Our speakers giving guidance about colorblind accessible slides. Uh, yes, blah.com. Is everything colorblind accessible? Yes. Are there other accessibility accommodations? Yes. And then any relevant links. Um, I, I want to just take an aside here and I said that um, most of your job as, an, as a badger will be to verify that they are saying what they are saying is true. These are things that you you can't really verify. We just have to take them at their word. So um, you don't have to go and look and make sure that the, <laughs> the venue that they've picked is wheelchair accessible. Like you don't need to go that deep. You will just trust that they're telling us the truth. Um, again, like we don't, <laughs> we're not going to make you go to the event and check and make sure with a, a colorblind accessible checker that yes, these signs are in fact colorblind accessible. Uh, so you know you're only going to have to verify to a point. It's mostly mostly just looking up this this information on the website. Whatever whatever is publicly available information, then that's what we care about really. Uh, that I should say that that's not not what we care about. That's the things that we can easily, uh, reasonably verify. 
And then finally, the last one is not about that. Wait. Oh, sorry, there were two more. Event location inclusivity. So this metric right here is a little bit different. Uh, this is asking them if they have done a check for um, a potentially problematic region where they're hosting the conference. So we're not saying that you don't have to, you're not allowed to host this in a place that might not be safe for some of your attendees, but we're just saying, have you checked? And then we're going to ask them about other events that might be happening in the same location, like some kind of rally that's not very safe for folks, for instance. Um, and then mostly we care about how are they communicating that to their attendees So, like give the attendees the, the opportunity to either come or not come based on that information. And if they're not sure about like where these lists of places of concern are those are in that metric. So, for instance, like um, here are some places that might not be very friendly for the folks in the LGBTQ community, right? So it's not we're not saying you cannot host an event there. We're just saying how are you going to communicate that, and how are you going to help protect your attendees, essentially? And it's it's hard because like, for instance, in Texas, which is right here in the states. Like the state is a little sketchy, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, like they are very liberal with their gun laws. So most people carry guns and that's kind of scary for folks, you know, to come to an, a, a conference and see people just with guns everywhere, um, just casually, right? Like that's that can be kind of scary. But Austin, which is right about here, is a pretty liberal city. So Austin is like a little bubble of of safety in this bigger state. So we're not saying nobody can ever host a, an event in Texas. Um, you know, it's just you just want to let people know that there are no protections for LGBTQ discrimination. It might not be that folks in that community might not feel 100% safe. And when I went to just as a, another aside, sorry, when I went to a conference that the LF was hosting in Austin they had ways for the attendees to donate to um, groups that that helped lgbtq youth uh, like suicide prevention and give them resources and, and housing and things like that so it was kind of it was great actually it was the lf's way of acknowledging the problems that exist in texas for those folks but also giving the attendees a way to help help make them feel safe and help um, just help the situation there. So it's really great how they how they kind of um, approach that. I feel like. And um, another side on this metric, the data science group has done myself and Chan and Sophia Vargas from Google. We did a bunch of research around this, um, talking to event organizers on like what how they handle this kind of stuff because it's hard, right? You don't want to never have an event in Texas because then you're just penalizing all of those folks in Texas, making it harder for them to attend any kind of, a, of an open source event, but also it can be a little bit, um, a little bit more uh, concerning for folks to come, who are coming from the outside. So anyway, it's a complicated, it's definitely a complicated situation. It's a complicated metric. Uh, so we're not judging them if they are gonna host folks in, or host events in those places. We just want to help them understand that they just need to communicate that to their their attendees and show the attendees that yeah we've done our research, this is what you might find here um, here's how we can help you, just so you know. Whew, that was a lot there one more metric and then i'll stop for questions. So this is our last metric we ask about it's public health and safety. Um, this is a separate badging program that we are not trying to duplicate we just want to we partnered with them. So this one's asking a whole lot about vaccines and masks and how the ventilation is and all of that. So it goes really deep and really specific on ways that an event can provide a, a safer environment uh, um, medically, I guess, or, or health, you know, health wise for their for their uh, attendees. So we just ask them, have you read about this? And if you're providing link, uh, providing information on your website, 
about public health and safety, let us know where that is. We used to ask if they had gone through that badging program, but um, it's a it's a lot to be perfectly honest, and like um, it just seemed like an extra layer of of stuff that a lot of event organizers did not have the ability to go through. So we didn't want to penalize them necessarily. We just want to bring awareness to that other other badging program. They're great, and actually Josh was the one who helped us create this metric in the first place. So we'll just say here is public health and safety. So in our in our test event, that's where the information is. And then that's it. And then they're going to hit submit. And we should see an issue be created in the badging repository, which it did. Yay. Thank you, Enoch and Desmond and Eddie Inca for fixing that. That was great. And here is my submission that I just filled out. So I will stop really quick for questions. I know that was a lot. Okay, we'll just go forward. If you do have questions, just raise your hand or yell it out. That's fine too. So now we have this issue in our GitHub um, badging it's an event diversity inclusion is the repo and here's all the things I just put in that application all right here in my issue. And the badging bot says hey thanks for applying here are your guidelines and here's your role as an applicant, which I should actually check these and make sure that they're still updated but yeah. So here we are, so now we have this open issue in this repository. So this is the part where Adyinka is going to come in and and assign people. So I'm going to just assign myself on this one, just so you can see what it looks like. So I have been assigned and I get a checklist created just for me. So this is the one I'm going to use to go through this application and then whoever else here i'll just assign peculiar just so y'all can see that she's also. Gonna get. A checklist just for her if she was the badger on this. Did it not do it? No, oh, there it goes. Okay. So here's Peculiar's checklist. So she would, this is the one she would use. So this is the only thing I need to worry about is mine, and she worries about hers. So I'm just going to go through here and say, okay, here are my initial checks. Yes, it's about open source. Yes, they have a website. Yes, there's a code of conduct. And they said they were the organizer of the event, so we're going to just have to trust them on their word that they were. And then here are my other checks. So if they are collecting demographic information, they have a process. Yes, 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 they said to all these things. They do all these things. And again, I'm just reading their answers and um, checking that these things are true. And if I need to go to these websites to just to double check, I will do that. Um, some yes, all these things are true. There's my diversity access tickets. I'm going to say no, um, because my event is not able to do that. We don't have the funds to do that. We'll just say for as an example. I, yeah, okay. So I'm actually going to leave all three of those unchecked just to, so you can see what this looks like. Inclusivity check they did, findability they did, okay. Public health they. Oh, yeah, we need to maybe change that. Okay. So now I am finished with my review, so I will just say Adyinka, but I'm not going to tag her because then she's going to be like, what is going on? <laughs> I'm just going to say I am finished with my review, Adyinka. Thanks. And I'll say good luck with the event, Elizabeth N. And I'll make that comment. So now my part as a reviewer is complete. I don't have to do anything else. Um, Peculiar is going to go, ooh, 
Peculiar, did you just do that or did I do yours? I'm walking on my own. I <laughs> love it. We did not even plan that, you guys. <laughs> so then when Peculiar's done, she'll also make a comment um, to, to the same, uh, with the same kind of sort of message, same general idea. And then when we're both finished, Arienka will come in and she will run that result. She'll just type that, literally just type that in an issue. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Oh, oh, we lost Peculiar. Uh-oh. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and run it so you guys can see what happens. Maybe. Okay, so they're getting, they're coming in at a 59% right now, probably because Peculiar didn't finish hers. Um, and there's been two reviewers. So me as a as Arienka or either any of us can go back and say, hey, are you okay with this result? Would you like to make any changes before we issue the badge? And then the event organizer might say, yes, I would love to make some changes. And then I will, as an organizer, I'll go back and see what I can fix, what I can tweak, where I didn't have, what, where I wasn't able to make a check. So if I haven't looked for these things, maybe I go back and I do that. I'm just going to check on hers. If I haven't read about this public health thing, then maybe I go back and do that. Let's see if we can get this up here. Okay. Whoops, I don't want that. Yeah, Harmony, go ahead. So uh, in, in cases where uh, the, the organizer is like, go back to like change some stuff, the reviewers have to also come back to like update their results or would like new reviewers be assigned or stuff like that? They would, yeah, they would, you're right, they would have to come back. And so um, they would say, I've made some changes. And then um, if they're, if you're, if you're still getting notified of these comments, and you see them come through and you come back, you can say, um, <clears throat> you can say, okay, I've re-reviewed. And blah, 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 blah. Uh, then Adienka would come back and then reissue the badge. So yes, you are correct. So I guess in that case, your job as a reviewer would not be done. <laughs> so that's a good, that's a great point. I would say it's it's not often that that happens, only because I think that event organizers, if they feel like they're going to get a low badge, they're going to do those things before they submit. Is my would be my feel. That's my my uh, guess. So anyway, when everybody's done and everybody's happy with what the result is, Adi Inka will come back and, re and um, write this command, just end. And then it takes that label off. It does the um, badge uh, HTML, and then it closes the issue. And it adds this event to the list of badged events. See, there we are. And here were the reviewers. Here's the issue in case anybody wants to go back and look. And we ended up getting a gold badge because we went back and fixed some stuff. So now I need to make sure I tell them to take that out. <laughs> take that out of the list of badged events because, yeah. Um, okay, so that's what that looks like. How are we feeling? What questions, what other questions can I answer for you? We can also go back and look if you're curious and want to just kind of poke around. Oh, yeah, there's a question in chat. <laughs> Elizabeth Kahn, yes. I think this needs to happen, actually. <laughs> I've been using that as my testing name for a few years now. I feel like it's. I'm just trying to manifest. I don't even know what would be the, the topic at Elizabeth Kahn. <laughs> um, maybe I only let in people whose name is Elizabeth. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I got to think about it. Um, okay, so this is an actual um, 
this is a, an event that is currently in progress of getting of getting a badge. Uh, you can see our two assignees here. Here, let's see. Uh, oh, it looks like the ch checklist is oh, okay. The badging bot was having some issues, so um, I'm just gonna tag actually tag it in here. I'll just give her a heart. There we go. So let's look at some that maybe we just did. Uh, let's look at QCon. So Wendy submitted this as uh, here's the event website right here. So as a reviewer, this is probably where I'm going to find all the information that she's said she's given me. So, okay, detail the process for measuring. So this is their answer. For data privacy reasons, we've removed the demographic questions. Um, and this is a conversation we also had with LF and others, um, because it's great to have that data so you know if your attendees, if you do are attracting a, a diverse um, pool of attendees, you know, or are they all like white guys from California, right? <laughs> right? Like that might be something you wanna know as an organizer. But also when you do collect that information, now it's on you to keep that information safe. And that is hugely risky because that's like personal information from people. And so it's a big responsibility to save that information, to store it, to keep it safe, keep it away from people. So that is a, that is a conversation that the LF has had multiple times internally, just like, how are we gonna save this information? How are we gonna keep it safe? And is it worth it? So they have decided not to require that information any longer. So if someone wants to opt in and give that information, great. And they, of course, will do their best to keep that information safe. But it's definitely more of an opt in than a requirement now. Um, they do say this. They do not allow all male speaker uh, lineups or panels. So they will keep that in mind as they're making their choices for speakers. Um, so that is just a way that they're also trying to just maintain that diversity across the speaker pool and across attendee pool. So if you see something like this, like that's not an actual yes, it's like a, a yes and, <laughs> yes and this is why, and this is what we're doing. Like they still are committing to event diversity and inclusion, right? Like they still care about that. It's not that they don't care. In fact, they care a lot about that. Um, here are some of the other answers that she's given. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and then Kafaya did her check and was able to check all of these things off based on those answers, based on checking the website. Let's see, provide a link to the page, convert it. Okay, let's just go check and see if they have diversity access tickets here. Yes, so they do. They have, um, or they had a scholarship where um, if someone is not working for, uh, oh, yes, so it was just a, a scholarship that they somebody could apply for. And here were the, the criteria. It could be a diversity, so someone from a marginalized group, somebody that is not working or being helped by a company to get there, or if they're a maintainer, they can also get a ticket. So, <clears throat> or get a scholarship. So those are just, oops, now I lost my thing. So those are just some ways that they are helping people get to the event, people who otherwise might not be able to attend. Family friendliness. They do offer on-site childcare, which is pretty dang amazing. So if you're a parent, you can come bring your child, have them play all day while you're doing the conference thing, and you're right there in the same building, you're right there. It's, it's really, really great. Um, so Kafaya did her check. Here's Anita. Anita did her check. And then said, yes, I'm done. I'm done. But I think it says thank you. She runs the result to see what the result would be. They're getting a 96. There really is no need to come back and forth and say, hey, are you okay with this? Because it's a gold badge and it's pretty darn good. <laughs> it's pretty darn good. It's 96%. So uh, she just went ahead and ran the end command. <clears throat> this is their badge. And there you go. Easy peasy. And I believe that if we go back to the LF 
uh, website here. Where is that? Uh, I believe that they put their badge right here. So you can see that that's on their website. That's what they've chosen to do with their badge. So yay, good for them. And really that's it. <clears throat> I'll go back over here. I do have one more slide for you. So here are, <clears throat> actually before I do that, what questions do you have that I can answer? Okay, well, let's go to this. Um, this is a file that helps you go forward. If you want, again, you are under no obligation at all to do anything right now. Uh, if you're like, yeah, this really isn't for me. I don't have time, whatever, whatever. Uh, totally fine, totally fine. But if you do wanna move forward and become a Badger, this would be your next steps. And this is a file that you can copy into your own drive to just kind of keep track of the things that you've done. Like you can put a little check here if you want, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, but it's just kind of a for you. So you'd want to make sure first and foremost, you do have a GitHub account. We have a form for you to fill out if you do want to become a Badger and it just asks some information, uh, your GitHub username so we can add you to the org, uh, your Slack username so we can add you to the badging channel. Uh, or we have a, a separate channel for reviewers for badgers and if you can only do them once in a while that's fine that's cool you know whatever uh, if you have any questions or anything like that so <clears throat> so that's a form for you there is this badging channel which is where the github notifications come through uh, we do talk about badging sometimes in there like if the bot is down that's kind of where those conversations happen um, and then, of course, there's the DEI channel, which is where we talk about the metrics and things like that that go into that application. We also talk about badging there a lot. Um, you want to make sure that you do sign up for once you're in the org, you can sign up for uh, notifications so that you get told <laughs> told when you have a, a application review um, assigned to you or an issue assigned to you. So it would be like up here at the top, you would just go here. I think, and you can get all the, here's all my net notifications. Um, you can ch change whether it happens either on GitHub or through your email. <clears throat> we are working on potentially having a Slack notification. So like if you get assigned a badge, it would just come through on Slack. We don't have that yet, but that is an idea that we have. <clears throat> um, here are the metrics too. If you do wanna read through the metrics, uh, just so you know about them a little more, um, have a little more information about them, then um, that's where you can find those. Again, you can go back through any of these closed issues. Some, some of these, there was some discussion and there was some back and forth. I don't remember which ones now. Um, you could probably look and see like the ones that have a lot of comments might be uh, GraphQL. That might be a potential where there was some back and forth functionally okay so it looks like maybe their website was down <clears throat> or something she couldn't find so she just asked her a question um i think it ended up being a regional thing but yeah so anyway this is just an example of like some back and forth that they had to have with the organizer of like hey we can't see your website um, and Andrea was like, it should be, but yeah. So anyway, so that's what you can do, something else to just poke around if you want. And then of course, if you wanna to come to the DEI working group meetings, that again is where we talk about the badging, we talk about the metrics, we talk about all things diversity, equity, inclusion there. Uh, I said this at the very beginning, but I will say this again, all of these things, these slides included are in this badging Slack channel. So if you join that, you can click this and you'll see all of those links, the link to this, um, these slides, you'll see the link to this, whoops, you'll see the link to this doc right here, you'll see the link to the form. Um, I forget what else is there, but yeah, you'll see all of those things right there in the badging 
channel. So don't feel like you have to remember all this because it's all right here for you. Okay, what questions? Lucy's snoring in the background. As, as always, all is right with the world when she's snoring in the background. I'm going to stop my share. Well, thank you guys for showing up. It was really great to see you. If you do want to move forward, just go fill that form out. We'll get you added to the places you need to be added. And of course, if you have any questions at all, you can ask uh, either in badging or DEI. You can ask really anywhere. Somebody will, somebody will be there to see you and to be able to answer or ping me and I can answer. Or Adinka. She probably knows more about it than I do at this point. <laughs> she's really, she's really, really wonderful. So I'm really grateful that she's been able to do so much work on this. All right. Well, I will go ahead and end the meeting. Thanks again for coming. Y'all are amazing. And if we see you around badging, great. If we don't, that's also valid. We'll see you around somewhere else. So have a great rest of your day, everybody. Oh, Daniel, you got a question. Go for it. I'm unable to hear you, Daniel, if you're talking. I see you unmuted, but I can't hear. Can you hear me Maybe. now? Oh, now I can, yeah. So it's like, uh, I wasn't been around, but now I'm back. So I would like to know about that form you talked about. The form? Okay, sure. Let me just share again real quick. Hey, so the form is, I'll drop it in the chat too. Here's this file that has all those links in it, which I, I'll put in chat if I can find the chat. There it is. There's that Google Doc that just has all these links in it. And then this form here is right there. I should also say there are other badgers in the in the group that would be willing to work with you if you get your first one and you have no idea and you're just really uncertain. You could just pop something in the badging channel or in the badging reviewer channel and that is and that I think we have to add you to that badging reviewer channel. Um, but you could just ask like hey could somebody go through this with me because i'm really not sure what i'm doing. <laughs> that would be totally fine like you're not we're not just like shipping you off to do it on your own, if you don't want like that we are here to help you and support you so don't feel scared or uncertain because we can support you for sure. It's okay, it's okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have questions. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and end this meeting. You, um, you're welcome to come to the community meeting, which happens in about three hours from now. So if I see you there, great. If not, also cool. We'll see you at some other meeting sometime soon. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, see ya, bye. Thank you, Elizabeth, thank you. You are welcome. Oh, Daniel, did you have one more question? Sorry. No, no, it was a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, then I will see you all later. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay.